If you're a DJ, you need to have custom edits in your crates. Custom edits can not only make your life a lot easier, but it can save your dance floor. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make perfect custom DJ edits every time using Ableton Live. <laughs> So maybe you've got a track that's just got a breakdown that goes forever and ever and ever and you love the main part of the track but every time you play it you start losing people because there's just this big undanceable section in the middle of the song. Or maybe you have a song that there's no drums in the intro and you're having a real hard time getting it to mix right. By making your own custom DJ edits, all of these problems are a thing of the past. Let's get into the software and let me show you how this is done. Okay, so here we are in Ableton Live, and this is typically what a new session in Ableton Live looks like. So it's going to give you a couple audio tracks and a couple MIDI tracks. Um, right now this window is called the Session View, and this is not where we want to be uh, for this type of editing. This is more for live performance, so I'm going to come over to the right-hand side here where you see these uh, little horizontal and vertical lines. Um, over on the side, and I'm going to click on the horizontal lines, and that takes me into the arrangement view. You can also get to this just by pressing the tab key on your keyboard. That will toggle back and forth. Um, and I only need one audio track for this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of any other tracks, uh, audio or MIDI, and just leave myself with one audio track. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and save this live set before I start working with it. So I have a music folder where I keep all my uh, live sets, and I'm going to go ahead and just call this custom DJ edit. Cool. So now we're ready to start editing. Um, one thing that I will say that's very important is you don't want it to uh, do what's called warping your tracks. Um, and what warping is, is where it's going to try and automatically detect the tempo and uh, adjust that for you. So what we want to do is go into the preferences. We're going to come to record, warp, and launch, and we're going to make sure that auto warp long samples is turned off. So um, now that we have our session created, we have it saved, and uh, warping is or auto warping, I should say, is turned off. I'm going to tab over to where I'm keeping my music here, and I'm just going to grab a track and drop it right into the timeline. Cool. So I picked this track specifically because uh, this, this is a good candidate for editing. It's got no drums in the intro, so let me play that back here so you can hear it. Now, if you're an experienced DJ, you could probably still beat that match that, no problem, but a couple things we can do to make it easier. Um, and there's also, you know, a bridge section here. Yeah, we at the spot, they be stunning now. They don't see the bigger picture, we be cutting now. And I'm just gonna remove this bridge section because the energy drops down too low. So, um, first thing I need to do is determine the tempo of this track. So Ableton has a uh, tap tempo button. But what happens is if you start playing the track and you start tapping this, it's going to start kind of skipping around and trying to adjust the timeline as you're tapping. So watch what happens when I try to tap tempo while the track is playing. You see it starts jumping around and skipping, so this is not the way you want to do this. Um, the way that I typically do this is I go to Google and I come to this website here. Just type in tap for BPM. And what you're looking for is all8.com, tap four beats per minute. So if I start uh, playing my track back here. I come and go like a rah, rah, rah. They don't want the to be going on. Nah, nah, nah. I'm coming back with the money in the bag. The rule is in my lab, yeah, I'm running for the cash. I come and go like a rah. So you tap on the space bar while the track is playing, and this website will try to estimate uh, how many beats per minute. So it's looking like it's right between 87 or 88. Um, let's try 88 and see how that works. Looks like it's pretty close, but you can see that uh, the drums aren't quite lining up with the grid, but let's hear what it sounds like with the metronome. Nope, that's not right. It's too fast. So let's take that down to 87. 
And you can kind of see now, it looks like the track is lining up a little bit better. Right there around bar nine, you see that kick drum is almost right there. Let's hear how it sounds with a metronome now. Sounds closer, but something is still off. So if I double click on this audio file, this is gonna open up the editor down on the bottom of the screen. If I zoom in, I can see there's this little bit of silence in the beginning. Let's go ahead and grab this little triangle here. This uh, basically tells live where you want the track to start playing. And we're gonna line it up right at the beginning of the track. And you can see the further that I zoom in here, the finer of adjustments it uh, lets me make. So I really wanna find right at the beginning of uh, this waveform here and just line that up right on the sound wave, pretty much right where it passes through this center line uh, that's called the zero crossing. So now that I've got that lined up, let me hear what it sounds like. Much better. Let's hear it with some drums. I come and go like a rah, rah, rah. They don't want the be going nah, nah, nah. I'm coming back. Okay, so we can hear that that's, that's all lined up nicely now. Um, and what I want to do is just kind of skip around in the middle and the end of the track to make sure that the metronome stays lined up. I come and go like a rah, rah, rah. Sounds good there. Let me skip to the end. Yeah, I'm out of watching all this boring. Still sounds good there. Let me skip to the outro. Yeah. Yeah, that's been my whole life, you know. Ever since I've cool. So if it's lined up in the beginning, the middle, and the end of the track, that means your tempo is right, and that means that we can start editing. So the nice thing about lining your track up to the metronome this way is now I can make use of Ableton's grid. So let's start by removing this bridge section here. Do it for myself and all you ever did was run your mouth. Yeah, we at the spot, they be stunning now. They don't see the bigger picture, we be cutting now. So I can right click anywhere in the arrangement section here and this uh, drop down box comes up and down towards the bottom, I see all my grid options down here. And I can change this into values of beats or bars. Uh, by default, it's on this adaptive grid and what that tries to do is as you're zooming in and out, it's going to uh, try to change the resolution and, and you know how many beats or bars you're selecting at a time. I don't want that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just say four bars. Um, and this is giving me four bars or 16 beats now that I have it set to four bars, I can highlight this section. Yeah, we had the spot, they be stunning. And I can just delete it. It's gone. Now, watch what happens uh, when I drag this back. And I'm gonna go four bars ahead of it and let it play. Put in work, put in work, I guess we work it out. Almost summer and the money almost running now. All this running up and down is getting funny now. I do it for myself and all you ever did was run your mouth. Yeah, I'm out of watching all this pony one. Now you can hear that was a really clean edit. Um, if I didn't know any better, I wouldn't even know that there was an edit there. So uh, that means everything's lined up nicely to our grid. And I'm just gonna turn our metronome off now because uh, we don't really need it. We know everything's working nicely. So we removed that bridge section. Now let's address the problem with the intro. So let me go back to that real quick. This is just, it's gonna be really tough uh, to beat match in a club, you know, when it's really loud and the subwoofers are going and, and there's just tons of noise. You need to have some drums or something that you can clearly mix this with another track with. So I'm gonna come over here to samples and I'm gonna put a couple drum samples in the beginning of this just to make it easier for me to beat match when I'm mixing. So uh, let's start by finding a clap. I'm gonna just type clap in the search. I like this little clap here, this little uh, light 808 one. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just drag that right into the project. Not only do the bars sync up, but also the individual beats sync up. So I'm gonna change this to quarter notes or uh, basically one beat. And I'm gonna drop this on the second beat and on the fourth beat. Here, if that lines up nicely. Sounds good. Um, and the way that I copied that over was just by clicking on it. And if you hold down Option, if you're on Mac or Alt, if you're on Windows, you'll see that little plus sign pop up. And that just means that you can continue to uh, make duplicates of this clap. Another way that I can do this is by highlighting this whole section. So these two bars I've highlighted, I'm going to right click and say duplicate. And you'll see next to duplicate, it shows me the shortcut for that, which is Command D. So let's click that 
and I want to do that all one more time. Make sure it's the full length of the intro. This time I'm going to use the shortcut. Just press Command D. There it goes. Okay, let's hear how that sounds. Cool. Already, I can tell that that's just. It's going to be a lot easier for me to mix in the club. So um, I'm also going to add a hi hat because uh, this is on the two and on the four. I, I need something on the one just to, again, make it a little bit easier. So let me find a hi-hat sample here. There we go, 808 hi-hat. You can never go wrong with an 808 hi-hat. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drop that in. Use my little option or alt trick here, and then go ahead and duplicate that over a few times. Cool, so let's listen to that now. that is gonna be a lot easier for me to mix in the club. Um, and I wanna do the same thing for the outro because the outro on this song has the same issue. No drums or anything there. So, you know, if I have another track that I'm trying to transition out of this with, that's gonna be just tough for me to keep those two tracks in sync as uh, I'm mixing out of it. So um, I can change my grid size again to eight bars since this intro is eight bars in length and you'll see that makes it nice and easy for me to just copy this whole section here and because I edited this this is no longer lining up on the eight bar line so I'm going to take it down to a slightly smaller grid size go down to four bars and uh, then I'm just going to go ahead and paste my hi hat and my clap there, and let's hear how this sounds. So you can see just how easy it makes it, you know, taking a little extra time to line it up to the metronome and line it up to the grid in Ableton makes editing really easy, makes it really easy to add extra drum sounds or percussion sounds uh, for mixing. So last thing that I want to do here is I'm going to click on uh, the track and hold shift to select all the different parts of my edit and I'm going to go to file export audio and video and I want to make sure that render track is set to master uh, make sure that render start starts at the beginning which will be one one and one and that render length ends up about where your track ends which right here is right about 68 bars so that's fine uh, the rest of this, for the most part, you won't have to mess with. Ableton Live 10 now allows you to encode MP3. So um, I'm actually going to turn Wave off, and I'm going to make this an MP3. So it's a small file size for my hard drive. And then I'm going to go ahead and say Export. And when I say Export, it's going to ask me where I want to save it. So I'm going to go ahead and do Music, into Live, Couch King, Custom DJ Edit Project make a new folder, I'm going to say export. Um, again, it's important to stay organized, so I try to keep everything all in one place so it's not scattered all over my hard drive. I will typically say, uh, let's say, uh, Tubi, that's the artist, and then track name, BPM 87, let's say save. And there we go. Now we have our custom DJ edit. Make sure you listen to it. Make sure you listen to the whole thing. All these editing programs are, are prone to errors, so just listen to it. Make sure it came out right before you go to the club thinking that it just worked. So let me just listen back, make sure everything showed up. Let's skip to the end. Cool, so I know my intro's there, my outro's there. Uh, I'm not gonna play the whole track just for uh, the sake of saving some time. Um, once again, any questions, just let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for checking this video out. If you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to hit that like button, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that little bell that turns on notifications. I'm gonna be putting up more videos about DJing, music production, and portableism. Thanks for watching, peace.